God is love? All the time. All the time? God is love. I had just a couple quick announcements that I forgot to look and see. I think this is one of them, is at least in the bulletin. Uh, next Sunday is All Saints Sunday. All Saints Day is actually November the 1st, which is tomorrow. The church will celebrate it next Sunday. On All Saints, of course, we light a candle for those saints that have gone to their eternal rest in the last 12 months. Uh, also next Sunday is Daylight Savings Time. Boo. Uh, so be sure and fall back. Uh, otherwise, you might get here in time to say, well, good morning and goodbye. So be sure and set that back. And then I just heard this morning a um, individual that had attended here for quite a while. It's been probably a, a year, it was before COVID, uh, was uh, Lucille Abels passed away on Friday. Now, Lucille used to sit here on the lectern side about three quarters of the way back about where Paul and Eve Davis were sitting. So um, some of you I know will remember her tall, thin lady um, that was attending with us. She started coming to uh, uh, Advent services, or <laughs> um, Lenten services, and then of course started on Sunday mornings. And then she, uh, because of uh, transportation, uh, did go back to her home church, which was Grace Lutheran in um, uh, Pickerington. Uh, but her the viewing will be Wednesday, five to seven at the Spencer's in uh, Pickerington. And with one more announcement. Good morning. Um, I just had a really quick um, special request. Um, so most of you know that um, I teach preschool in Lancaster um, for the Head Start program. Um, and the Head Start program, if you're not familiar with them, um, we service low-income families. Um, a couple years ago, we had wanted, we had taken our um, kiddos on some field trips and we had asked for donations from you all and you generously supported us um, and we were able to take our class on four different field trips that year. Um, they had an absolute um, blast and we really enjoyed that. Unfortunately, due to COVID the past two years, we have not had been able to do that. So we've been trying to find other things to do with them. Um, this year, we were, we are able to make a book. Um, each of the kids are going to make and design their own book or a page of a book, and we're going to actually get that published and put into a bind, you know, a, a regular bind book. Um, so we're going to get those back um, right before Christmas, and so it was our hope to be able to give each of the kids their own copy of the book. Um, the books are going to cost $25 a piece. So I thought I would come to you again, because you guys are so generous in this, um, and ask if you would like to sponsor one of our kiddos. Um, it'd be $25 would buy that child and their family a book to have for Christmas. So if you're interested in that, just see me after church, and I'll, I'll get you all set. But thank you so much. <laughs>
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are wrong to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By all we have done, and by all we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Oh, God. 
For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed, and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Christ and Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effected through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? Is it excluded by what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits a sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Being Reformation Sunday before I start the sermon, a little tidbit of useless knowledge. Psalm 46 was one of Martin Luther's favorite psalms. And if you read the King James Version, Psalm 46, the King James Bible came, was released when William Shakespeare was 46 years old. And so if you go to Psalm 46 and count 46 words into the psalm, the word is shakes. If you count 46 words from the end, it's speared. And that was just their way of tipping their hat. And it really is, we sat there and counted it when they told us that. So the next time you're on Jeopardy, you can get straight. Let's pray. Let the words in my mouth and the meditations of each heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. As I said today, it's Reformation Sunday. This religious holiday has a very specific Lutheran flavor. You will not find it listed in the liturgical calendars of a Roman Catholic or Southern Baptist Church. On this Sunday, we sing what I like to call the Lutheran fight song, The Mighty Fortress of Our God, and we break out the Red Pyramids. Reformation Sunday is a celebration in which we remember the actions of Martin Luther long ago on All Hallows' Eve, October 31st, 1517. We remember Luther writing a brief essay, only 95 theses in length, and nailing it to the front door of the Catholic Church in Wittenberg, Germany. The essay presented his rationale for disagreeing with the Church's sale of indulgences. Now, an indulgence was a certificate by the Pope and st stated that the purchaser of the certificate would receive forgiveness of all of his or her sins or a family member. The person would not have to spend a single day in purgatory, which was thought to be a place between heaven and hell. Now in purgatory, they would have their sins purged from them, much like a metal ore is purged of its impurities in a crucible. Luther disagreed. He said, there was no biblical justification for purgatory. Our sins are fully forgiven by the acts of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Nothing more is necessary. That day is long in the past. Relations between Roman Catholics and Lutherans are more vibrant than they ever have been. Uh, the 500th anniversary, both churches took back about 500 years of name-calling. 
and so they get along a lot better. But we mark this special day, and we remember that the Reformation was not a once and for all event that happened a long time ago. The Lutheran Reformation is a, a movement, it's not an event, event. The Reformation of the Church is meant to be ongoing, summed up by the statement, please be patient with me, God is not done with me yet. On this Reformation Sunday, we consider a passage from the Gospel of John, where Jesus addresses a group of Jews. They have taken his message to heart, and Jesus tells them that if they keep on in this way, they will know the truth, and the truth will make them free. But they take issue with Jesus' words. The truth will make you free. We like to think that we have aligned ourselves with that which is true, but unfortunately, there's a whole host of lies that we can mistake as truth. Just because we believe them to be true doesn't make them so. They're still lies and not reality. At one time, there was a common understanding that the earth was flat. Now we know better. Believing it was flat did not make the world flat. When we regard falsehoods as truth, we're left with a distorted understanding of the universe. In order to see what's really there was reality, we need to leave the hall of mirrors, the distortion of lies, and step into the light, step into the truth. The truth will make you free. Jesus says these words not to his adversaries, but to those who believe in him. Strange words to say to his followers. By following him, aren't they already walking in the truth? We could understand if he were saying this to his opponents. It would make perfect sense for him to say the truth will make you free to those who are hostile to his message or opposed to him. But Jesus said this to people who believed in him, people who said amen to his teachings. So if Jesus were to suddenly appear in our midst this morning, he would say the same thing to us too. The truth will make you free. The response from Jesus' audience was objection. They said, what do you mean make us free? We're descendants of Abraham. We've never been slaves to anyone. Well, that was not quite true. Their early ancestors had been enslaved by the Egyptians for about 400 years, and later still, other ancestors were captives in Babylon and currently their country was overrun by the Roman Empire. <clears throat> so there was a good deal of denial at work in their insistence that they had never been slaves to anyone. Jesus counters their remark by pointing out that those who sin are slaves to sin. Now when we gather on Sunday mornings, we begin our common worship with a confession of our sin. In the liturgy, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. Our sins cover the things we have done and the things that we have failed to do. We state that we have fallen short of the two great commandments, to love God above all else and to love our neighbors as ourselves. The first step in freedom is realizing that we're in chains. How can we be saved if we don't recognize our need for a savior? To those who question their bondage, to those who believe they're not tangled up in sin, Jesus says, my word has no room among you. God's transforming power can find no foothold in the hard heart. He must find a way to show us our radical need. Now, it might seem like a downer to come here week after week and begin our worship with this confession, but this truth sets us free. There's something cleansing in this confession. It's cleansing and liberating. Week after week, that confession is followed by the truth that sets us free so that our hearts are unburdened. That confession is followed by the remembrance of God's rich mercy. We hear that God loved us even when we were dead in sin. It's easy to love the lovely. It's natural to feel kindly and warm to those who love you, but to be accepted in our full nature, even our rebellious, unpleasant nature, is truly a mark of amazing grace. There's nothing we can do to God, nothing we can do to make God love us less, and there's no work or deed that we can do to make God love us anymore. The truth is that God loves us no matter what. Now I want to share with you two stories I, I heard as a, a teenager that really stuck with me. Modern parables, so to speak, to illustrate God's love. Once there was a bridge operator, you know, the big cities where the river, the boat, big boat comes through, the bridge has to open up. Well, there was a bridge operator and he loved his son. His son was nine years old, always got into trouble, kind of like my 10-year-old and 5-year-old. But, um, it, was, it looked to be a slow day at work, so Dad brought his son to work, and boy, they just had a blast, had a good time. The boy went and ran around down where all the gears and everything were, and, 
and just just had a great time down looking looking at everything well the sun was down where the machinery was and all of a sudden the alarm went off and the man looked and there was a passenger ship of about 700 people coming towards the bridge now it was rush hour so there were hundreds of cars on the bridge and the man had a decision he needed to make he kept yelling for his son and he couldn't get an answer so the man had to decide whether or not he would sacrifice his son or whether or not he would save this ship and the countless people on the bridge well as the ship approached the man yelled louder and louder and he didn't hear anything from his son so right at the time of impact the man pushed the lever and the bridge opened up and his son was sacrificed for the life of many others the other story back in the old west there was a righteous judge and everybody went to this man because they knew he was a man of god and full of integrity and often with good folks sometimes their kids aren't as good as they are and so there was a the man's son was a teenager and had gotten in a fight after some alcohol was involved and he killed a man and so he was taken to jail and he was sentenced to be hung at the gallows well, the righteous judge did not know what to do. He couldn't just use his power and authority to let his kid go free. He really, he, his kid got, his, was going to get what he deserved. So after thinking about it, the night before his son was to die, the man went to the jail, let his son go free, and disguised himself as his son, and went to the gallows the next day in his son's place. God loved us so much that he sacrificed his only son so that we may live with him. Jesus, like that judge, takes our place and dies to death we should have so that we can have a relationship with God the Father. You will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Free from sin and free for service. What do I mean? Because of God's ultimate act to the life death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we no longer need to worry whether or not we're good enough. We don't need to worry whether or not we're saved. God loves us, and because of his love for us, we're free to serve him. We can take all of that energy we're spending, whether wondering if we're loved or forgiven, and put all that energy into serving God by loving and serving one another in his name. Not because we have to, but because it's a natural response to such an act of grace. Have you ever been given a gift that was so great that you wanted to be better? When I was nine years old, I was what you would call, we'll say a little cuss because we're in church, but you can kind of guess what, what I was called. I had three older siblings, so I had to fend for myself, and I often did things to get them in trouble. I would talk back to my parents. I didn't even, you know, you know how, much you, how much you know when you're younger, right? Well, Christmas, I saw this drum set in the catalog. Remember, we would get the Sears and J.C. Penney catalog. Kids don't know about that these days. And uh, I picked, picked out a drum set. And my dad laughed at me. He said, you think we're going to spend, they didn't have a lot of money. You think we're going to spend two or however hundred dollars on this drum set? The way you're acting? You don't deserve that. Maybe you act a little bit better and we'll talk about it next year. Well, I thought, well, my parents never, they always come through for me in the end. Well, Christmas morning came and we opened up our presents. No drum set. I could have got a gold watch and I would have been mad as a kid because I wanted that stupid drum set and I didn't get them. And my parents were like, well, I don't know why you're surprised. We told you what you had to do. So I sought and we went to church and uh, came home from church and my, my mom said, well, go and get something from, go get lunch or whatever. And I go in the kitchen and under the sheet, the drum set. My dad had come home before church was out and put the drum set together. And uh, that was one of the neatest gifts that I ever got. I had there's no way I deserved such a gift, but it was a total act of grace for my parents. And as a result, I did my chores around the house. I mouthed off a little less. I still fought with my siblings because they started it. But <laughs> it made me want to be better. That kind of gift is what God gives us through Jesus. God has given us many gifts, but one of the most important gifts is His Word. The Bible is the best resource we have to tell us the old, old story of Jesus and His love, as the hymn says. In the day's passage from John, 
Jesus speaks of the importance of his word. Staying in the word was most important to Martin Luther. That's why he translated the New Testament into common German of his day. He wanted his parishioners to have access to the Bible in a language they could understand. The word of God is the foundation for our daily reformation. So today, October 31st, 2021, we remember that the Reformation did not end 500 years ago. It is ongoing. We're constantly called to a life of Reformation, a life of confessing our sins and freely receiving the forgiveness Christ won for us on the cross. We're called to stand together and proclaim that message to all who will listen. We're called not to give up that freedom of the gospel and allow ourselves to become enslaved in works righteousness, the filthy rags our Savior died to set us free from. We're called to put all our focus as a church on Jesus Christ, not ourselves, our works, words, or emotions. We'll try to conform to the latest societal trend. We're not to put our trust in our heritage, the fact that we're members of a particular Lutheran church body or association, or that we've always been faithful members of our churches, or in any of our own works or labors. We're to put our trust in Jesus Christ and his word which first points out our sin and calls us to repentance, and then points us to the cross, where we find complete, total forgiveness for all our sins and the key to eternal life. Today on this Reformation Sunday, we give thanks for Jesus' message to the Jews of his day, showing them where they went off track and leading them back to the freedom of the gospel. We give thanks for Martin Luther, who led the church of his day out of the pit of works righteousness to rediscover the good news of Jesus Christ, that is the church's life and salvation. And we give thanks that God has continued to preserve that good news, gospel, for us to hear today and to share with the world in desperate need of hearing it. May we always remember who truly is our life and salvation and center our life as a congregation around the good news of Jesus Christ seeking to reform his church now and forever. You will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen.
Please stand as you're With the whole church, let us affirm our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people born into their name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for his life-giving and purifying fire. Thank you for the gifts of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and fear of the Lord, and joy in your presence. Thank you for reforming, renewing, and sustaining your one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pour out that spirit upon your church. Make it your holy habitation. Keep it steadfast in your word. Strengthen it in the face of temptation and defend it from evil. Reform and purify it from sin and error and bestow on it your saving peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be the refuge and strength of Christians when they are persecuted for confessing Jesus as Lord. Grant them the strength to endure, even to giving their life in faithful witness to him. Give us the courage and will to defend their witness, provide for their needs, and boldly confess the faith, and the hope that we share in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pour out your spirit upon the teachers and theologians of the church. Cause them to hand on, as of first importance, the gospel of salvation through Jesus Christ. Bless church schools, colleges, and seminaries, that they should write your words upon the hearts of many. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Be to this congregation our help and our redeemer. Gladden our hearts with the joy of your saving love. Empower us to share our joy and your love with those who do not know either. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift before you the needs of all those whose lives are shaken by suffering. Be in their midst and let them not be overthrown. Give them your saving help and say to them, Be still and know that I am God. Restore them to health and hope, that they may proclaim the awesome things you have done. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Most holy Lord, we give you thanks for the lives of all your faithful people who have claimed and redeemed through the precious blood of Jesus. Grant that we may humbly follow in their footsteps, boldly trusting in your promises, faithfully proclaim your word, and cheerfully serve in your name. Bring us through the merits of our Savior into your kingdom. There, with all the redeemed, we shall glorify you in the power of the Spirit forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Who rose beyond the bounds of death, and on this day, as he had promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon his cho the chosen disciples. At this, the whole earth exalts in boundless joy. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those
Please stand. And now the precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, beloved in Christ, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace and love your neighbor.